that's where they broke the game open. Up nine, I think with like 520 to play. So we were in a good spot. Um, there were some issues, um, you know, against their switching, which stifled us on, on offense. Um, you know, defensively, uh, you know, defending without fouling. Uh, you know, 10 free throws in that quarter to our zero. And I think that's been an issue recently, especially the last two games. Um, you know, we've been getting killed from the free, free throw line. Um, you know, it's just you know, we've got to stay aggressive, play, play an attack mode, get downhill. Um, but we also have to defend without fouling. Um, we're getting outscored right now in the last two games by 30 points from the free throw line, which is a huge margin. Um, and that's somewhat we can control, but uh, we just have to be mindful of it and, and kind of clean that area up. At times, I think it is a distraction. Um, you can say your piece and move on. No one's going to be uh, happy when you feel like you're getting you know the short end of it, but it's not going to change anything. You know, I think it's it's one of those areas where control the controllables and not let's not get distracted and let it now compound um, and bleed over into the next possession. We've seen that at times, and we get sideways. Um, we have to be able to control and play with play with more poise. His level of confidence, you know, I think, is is gone, you know, gone up. Um, he was obviously shooting the three well. You know, we talked about last night or the other night of he's got to, you know, look to get more threes up. Now the, the right types of threes and the ball finds him. He's got to space correctly, but he's shooting it with confidence. I think his teammates are looking to find him. Um, you know, he's playing downhill, playing aggressive, and defensively, he's been he's been solid. You know, some of the coverage confusion, I think, is still him kind of figuring things out, understanding terminology. But the one-on-one -on -one has been, for the most part, pretty good. Yeah, it's, it's the off-ball defense. But then also after the switch, you get back into certain coverage situations. Um, some of that's new to him, um, where I think he's just got to pick up his body position, um, you know, the, the details of, of, of those situations, I think. Uh, clean those things up. Um, get better with this level of communication. Um, but that, that just takes time and, and reps. But overall, I think he's progressing in the, in the right direction. Uh, the only thing is his spatial discipline and just making sure he's quick with his decisions. Um, you know, catch and go, attack the rim right away, um, move the ball, or, or look for if you got it open and you're within rhythm, shoot the ball. Shoot it with confidence. I think it's a good thing for us. No, to a, to a certain extent, um, you know, to your point, you don't have those guys that play in those certain areas. And Spencer was a downhill attack guy. Brad is obviously, you know, going to have the ball in his hands and he's going to play in attack mode. Um, you know, we're, we're constructed a, a little different, but it's also, um, you know, you get in the paint, you have to finish through contact, you know, or we have to kick out uh, to the appropriate areas. We're playing in crowds, which once again leads to the turnovers. You know, it's an other area that's, that's been crushing us lately. Uh, I think it's 17 or averaging 17 turnovers the last two games for 24 points. And you, you gift your opponent 24 points, you're, you're in for a rough night. Uh, so, you know, th that's an area, once again, that we can control to, to a certain extent. But, uh, you know, we're mindful of it. You know, guys have to understand how teams are guarding us. Um, how to space, you know, and when we do find ourselves with switches, we have to open up the floor to allow guys room to play. I don't know how much uh, play type track it is that you take in this gospel, but according to Synergy, uh, Porzingis averages more post up plays per game than Jackson is per game. Um, what will that change about your offense and um, having him as an extra shooter? Oh, it's a good thing. <laughs> and, you, you know, we you post him because he can score, but you, you post a playmake. You know, I think that's just an opportunity. It gives you a cog and you can kind of play off of him, cutting, splitting, um, you know, and it, it takes that uh, his defender, he's got to honor him, you know, because he, he can stretch the defense and you'll see similar actions from the high post or the elbow. You can't sag and clog a thing up, you know, when a guy like that has the ball, you have to guard him. So that should especially give us room to cut and play behind it. I, I just think his versatility. Um, you know, he's a six ten, you know, point forward. 
He's got the ability to play off the bounce, uh, you know, he play pick and roll. He attacks in the open floor. Uh, he's got the quickness and agility to beat his man off the bounce. So it's, it's a nightmare if you want to play big, you know, because he can stretch the defense. He's shooting the three well. Um, and if you play small, you know, he oftentimes overpowers those smalls, whether on the drive or, you know, on the glass. He's finding areas to uh, have success uh, with those smaller matchups. I mean, it's it's tough to look, you know, look around the league and see how other teams are going to match. But I still think he has the ability to do those things. Um, does that does that affect his effic efficiency? I don't think too much. But with the other other guys on the floor, you know, you add KP to the mix of any group, it changes the dynamic and I think opens up a lot for everyone else. I mean, it's hard to say. I mean, obviously, Trez was effective in that area. There's no question. I can't dispute that. Um, but I do think it does give us a little bit more, you know, parity that we don't have to always play pick and roll to create advantage. You know, without Brad on the floor and Ish to a latter extent, they go where they want to go. But uh, we don't have guys who can really break the defense down. You know, Kyle does it. Um, you know, with his ability to play against bigs. But, um, you know, we get a lot of catch and shoot. We have to generate offense with our cutting. So um, to add that di uh, dimension, I think, is a you know, good thing to have. Yeah, it's just something team wide, though. I mean, our overall finishing has to get better. And that's just uh, it's a byproduct of concentration, you know, understanding how to play angles, play through contact. Um, you know, all those possessions that they matter. You know, it's not just the breakaways, but uh, anything around the paint restricted area, we, we got to come away with one, two or three points. And we are leaving a lot of points on the board. So it, it's a point of issue that we're we're working on and we're aware of. And we have to kind of get our guys back to just basic finishing, you know, it doesn't have to be tricky or awkward, but um, we, we got to convert in those areas. I think it's a little bit everything, you know, you, whether it's inexperience or he's playing through or trying, trying to play for contact. Um, but it's just a mindset of, you know, slowing down, concentration, being able to absorb it and finish, uh, finish it at the rim. All right, Coach, let's switch over to Zoom. We'll start with Chris Miller. Appreciate it, Sandro. Hey, Wes, I got a two-part question about Porzingis. One, is he still doing one-on-ones? Yes, he is. And I don't know if you've had this conversation with the medical staff, but just kind of looking at the calendar, is there a date where you guys would say, hey, maybe we just punt and we'll see you next year? No, I mean, we're not there. Um, if, if that's the case, I don't think the injury – um, would warrant that. I'm not going to speak for the medical staff. It, we, you know, we meet twice a day on it, um, you know, to see where he is prior to workout or, or practice, reevaluate him afterwards. Um, so it's ever evolving. You, you hope at some point you don't see the, you know, the effects that, that they're concerned with, and you know, we can kind of expedite the return. But until that point, you know, we're going to treat it day to day and, and hope that he responds well. Appreciate it. Thank you. But in Neil, hey coach, um, just given that you guys might not have a lot of practice time where you are doing, you know, contact three on three, five on five, do you think there's any chance that, you know, KP could go get that work in with the go go? Yeah, there's a chance. I mean, we'll pull those, those guys to play, whether it's three on three or, you know, five on five if necessary. But, you know, I think that's what the, uh, you know, the G League is there. It's available. We've talked about using them as a rehab tool as well. So it's not just for the development of our young players, but, you know, to have them next door gives us, you know, multiple uses. And they're there and available. Uh, by all means, you know, we'll look at that. And for Denny, you know, he had 
going back to pre All Star break, six teams, double digit scoring, and then you know against Cleveland, you know wasn't able to get on the scoreboard. What did you see maybe um, that he wasn't able to get going as much on the offensive end against Cleveland? Well, I say I think some of that was fatigue. You know, you got to understand too, a young player, he's logged probably more minutes, you know, than, he, than he's ever played, obviously in the NBA. Um, and we're asking him to do a lot, you know, ask him to defend at a high level, rebound. Um, he's been a playmaker for us. So he's not going to, he's not going to score double digits every night. He's going to have stretches like, like he's shown. He may go through some droughts, but, uh, you know, as long as he's playing the right way, uh, I have no issue with that. And that level of consistency will, will, it'll find it's, you know, the happy medium. Um, it, we all want him to have success and play at a high level. I'm not sure that's realistic for everybody. You know, we've seen everyone kind of go through lulls and that's just the, the nature of the game. But, you know, I want to still see him play with confidence, st stay aggressive. Um, and I think for the most part, he's done that. He had a rough night as we all did. And, you know, we were only able to muster up 80 some points as a group. So, you know, that's on the second night after scoring 153. So <laughs> there's a balance in there somewhere. <laughs> you know what honestly all just is i've never done nothing like that again uh, i remember a uh, tip back dunk that i potentially thought i had was in high school i could tell you the team is playing against playing against a team called mount pleasant my junior year ball came off i thought perfectly and they called gold 10 so obviously it was not a put back dunk but uh ball came off perfect uh so the, the I give credit to God for the blessing he gave me for my legs. I, I can't even like, you know, I, I've never done nothing like that. So, you know, I would have taken a win over a pit back dunk, but, uh, uh, so it just came off like, I guess, perfect angle. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I kind of surprised myself. I ain't gonna lie to you. Cause when I dunked it, I just was like, Oh, do you jump off the rim real fast? Or do you just hang here? So, so just kind of in the moment. So you have never done that in college? No. Any of your NBA seasons? Mm -hmm. Anything? Nope, nope. Uh, I've had dunks in practice, but not no putback dunk. Yeah. Like, I've had dunks before. I think Josh was with me in Orlando when I had a dunk. But that was like, whew. I was like, what, 21, 22 years old? 23 years old? That was a long time ago, so. Yeah, no, that was 10 years ago. What was the feeling like after the last, the last game? Yeah, because um, you know we got to start, you know, closing out some of these games. Uh, but uh, I'm a half glass kind of guy, and we're right there. Uh, it's little things that we can and we will fix. Uh, defensively, I thought last game was really good. Um, I kind of kicked myself a little bit because I think offensively, um, on some of those switches, I maybe could have attacked Jared Allen a little bit more um, instead of, you know, settling for, you know, tough shots over his size and him and marking his size. Uh, but for me, just uh, trying to execute down the stretch, the right shots, ball movement, player movement, um, you know, so we're not stagnant. Um, and so that's something that I thought back because we played um, well enough defense to win the game. We really did. You hold a team. Um, to under 100 points in this league now these days. Um, you know, you count it up as a win. We was up nine several occasions uh, going down the stretch. Uh, just didn't pull it out. So, uh, you know, we got to execute down the stretch. Uh, San Antonio was a close one. Indiana was a close one. Um, and last night against Cleveland, or, you know, two nights ago, one of them nights uh, against Cleveland. Uh, so we got to execute. And, and I was in there at the end at the time. And, you know, you know, I take it personal as a point guard to to make the right play, make the right shots, get the ball in the hands, and uh, get some type of movement. That I felt like <clears throat> I didn't do a great job of that. Yeah, I mean, I feel settled when I first came. Uh, yes, sir. I feel I feel settled. You know, because it was a new play, not a new place. I'm sorry. It's a place that I've you know been before, a lot of familiar faces. So it just felt like you're coming back home. Um, I enjoyed my time in Charlotte. I've uh, been back home. You know, a lot of guys throughout their career would love to play in their hometown. Um, 
So I was blessed enough to, you know, able to do that. A lot of friends and family was at games, but uh, this feels like home. Just does. Been here two years. Uh, you probably can count one of the years a little extra because of the pandemic. We were just sitting in the houses and the bubble and, and the experiences we went through. So uh, it felt like home when I got here. It really did. Like a lot of familiar faces. You see guys and all, you know, so this, it was good. What have you learned about getting settled in a new place when you haven't played there before? And is it sometimes harder with some teams and cities than with others? Well, it's funny because uh, as crazy as my career has been, it's actually settled down a whole lot over the last six years. So the first six years was a little crazy. And then I um, was in Philly twice. Uh, but it settled down once I got to Detroit, three years, here two years, uh, Charlotte, then back here. So it's, it's kind of settled down. Um, but uh, then again, I still know those experiences to know where you're going from one place to another. Um, so uh, honestly, man, I, I try to, wherever your feet are, that's where you are. Like, you know, and, and anytime I got traded and moved, uh, I always used to say my next move is the best move. But, Truly, truly, truly blessed my mother and father. Um, you know, so I wasn't never really tripping about it. Like I had strong faith in whatever the Lord has me, what direction I'm going, it's gonna work out. So uh, but it, it gets difficult when you go to a new place because you don't know a lot of the guys, you gotta get familiarized with guys. But here, you know, even the coach West, I had Coach West in Orlando and Golden State. Uh, so the experiences of moving around a lot uh, helped me in that case. So um, you know, again, it, it can be difficult if you're not used to it. But for me, I didn't have any kids at the time when I was moving a lot. Didn't have any have a wife at the time, so I'm okay. I was okay. Seems like you have a pretty good connection with Daniel Gafford. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. So pretty accurate log to him. What's it like to you know put a combination of those? Yeah, you know what? We start building that that combination last year. Um, you know, for me. As soon as I see two guys coming my way, um, and I know Gaff is coming on that weak side, um, and usually guys on that low is trying. It's usually a sh shorter guy trying to bump. They're not going. There, there's no way they're gonna have to hit him before he takes off. Uh, and so usually it's not a big guy. Um, it's usually a guard just trying to bump on that low man. And so I'm like, you're not getting that. So I'm I'm gonna throw it up, and, and then if a guy does bump, then you skip it to the corner. So. I've connection that really started growing last year. Um, and uh, we just have continued it on. Um, I've had great experiences with bigs who, you know, who are live catchers. And uh, so uh, Gav, he's special and he's athletic and, and we have to continue to grow that connection. All of us, me, AG, um, sometimes it's not live, sometimes it's pops, um, TB, um, KP when he gets back out there. Um, so Vern, like you, you build those connections in practice and stuff like that. And, and so it just picked up, you know, from last year playing with Gav. Yeah. Yeah. Kuz has always had game to me. I've always loved this game from afar. Um, but now he's playing with, uh, confidence, playing with a level of freedom. Um, and But Kuz has never had fear. That's one thing I love about Kuz. And I, I can't speak for Bron, LeBron, but uh, just watching him when he was with the Lakers, I think Bron really respected that. He never had fear. Never shied back on taking a big shot, uh, making the big plays. And so his game is just constantly expanding this year. It's growing. He's in a great rhythm right now. Um, he's in a great flow. And, you know, like I say, he's playing with a lot of confidence, a lot of confidence. And his game is growing. You can tell he's constantly working on his game, getting better at different things. And uh, and coaches giving him the freedom um, to, to uh, kind of open a dynamic of his game that people probably didn't know, him handling the ball at the top and doing different things, playing and picking a role. So uh, he's really expanding his game. And uh, I'm happy he's on our side. Uh, 
Like, right, right. <laughs> oh, he's cool. Uh, down to earth. Um, you know, I, I don't know the persona that people have based upon just, I guess, the outfits. Um, you know, I, I, I don't know. Like, I, you know, I play with Russ. Russ is one of my best friends in the league. So uh, the persona that, you know, you put out and give out to people, uh, especially the media, that's what they're going to portray. Uh, or to just everyday fans. Uh, but Kuz is like down to earth, joking, laughing. Um, you know, just like anybody, um, you know, likes to have his peace, uh, but at the same time, like, is outgoing and, and, and like, me and him, I, I wish, you know, obviously I wasn't here early in the year, but every day, every day, you just get to know guys, and uh, our relationship is growing every day, and, uh, but he's just, you know, he's down to earth, he cool, he jokes, he laughs, like, you know, I don't know the public perception, uh, but I know he's cool with me. You know, he's cool with me, and uh, he always has been, you know, just kind of as an opponent playing against him. Kuz has always came off as, as down-to-earth, cool dude. And uh, and like I said, I'm glad he's on our side now. Well, he's on my, you know, I'm playing alongside with him. You mentioned uh, you worked with Wes earlier in your career, his career. What's it like seeing him as a head coach now? Oh. And, like, uh, him now to the yeah, West man. One thing I like, I he doesn't know I watch him. Like he still like rebounds. He still gets in the drills. He still has this hunger that he had when he was an assistant coach. Um, Wes is super super cerebral, and he doesn't just tell you things. He tells you, and he tells you why he's telling you. Uh, so he explains, um, you know, what he's trying to do and what he's trying to get across. Um, and I think for myself, I personally can speak, I appreciate that. Um, I'm constantly picking his brain, um, trying to figure out what he sees, what he, you know, doesn't want to, you know, what he wants, what he doesn't want. Uh, but for the most part, he allows each guy to play. Um, and, uh, but nah, coach was always cool, man. He always brought this level of calmness to the game. Um, never got too high, never got too low. And as you know, as a head coach, that's huge. Because, you know, if, you're, if we see the, the, the head man, you know, struggling and or up and down in his personality based upon how the flow of the game is going, um, me personally won't go like that, but I'm sure everybody else will. And coach stays calm. Um, nah, head coach looks good on coach, and I'm happy for him. I really am. All right, Ish, let's switch over to Zoom for a few questions. We'll start with Neil. Hey, Ish, I know, I think in the past, um, you know, we've asked you about starting versus, you know, off the bench. I think last time you said, you know, yeah, you're you know, very much comfortable off the bench. I guess, how do you feel now with this, you know, new group of players that are, you know, coming together? Do you still feel that, you know, you're still at your best coming off the bench? Yeah, no matter to me, just as long as I'm playing, I ain't tripping. <laughs> uh, you build rhythm and flow with, with each team, with each guy. Um, you know, obviously I'm comfortable with guys that I played with last year. Um, and then with Pope, I played with him in Detroit. Kuz, uh, it's pretty easy to play with Kuz, man. He just, he just flows and plays. Um, you know, uh, so you, you're figuring out each guy. CK, Corey's a special player, a special shooter. Um, so you just, you're just figuring the guys out and different things like that. And whether you're starting or coming off the bench, uh, you find that rhythm with the guys and the flow and where each guy wants the ball and how um, he preferred, how they prefer to play. Either way, uh, ball movement, player movement um, is huge on the offensive end. Um, and then defensively communicating and talking is huge. And, and that, that talking on the defensive end brings that connectivity. And then offensively, when you're sharing that ball and you're playing with some pace, everybody loves to play that way. Um, so uh, you just, you know, whether first or second, you just you just find that rhythm with the guys and you, and you roll that way. Thanks, Ish. I think uh, the putback dunk was a little harder than the one you had last season against the Lakers on the outlet path where you're all by yourself. Yeah, no, that yeah, that, that for sure was. I, I think I just surprised myself because I just came off injury and they threw it and I was like, man, maybe I should dunk this. 
but the putback was the putback honestly surprised me. The one that rushed through, I knew I was gonna dunk that the whole time. Thanks, Fish. Yes, sir. And we'll finish up with Christos. Christos, are you there? Yeah. Christos, I think he might be on uh he froze. Looks like Christos is frozen. Dang, Christos. I see you though. You got your hand on your mouth though. Uh, you hear me now? We got you, Christos. Yeah. Oh, you back. Okay. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Uh, some some connected troubles. I'm sorry. Nah, don't worry. Uh, okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, well, is after the first two games uh, of the second half of the season, what would you like to to change about your game as a team? Uh, what would I like to change for our team? What would you like to maintain? Oh, maintain since uh, coming from All Star break. Yes. Ooh, you know what? It's a lot of good things. Uh, first and foremost, we um, in stretches we've been we like like the San Antonio game. I thought in stretches we defended pretty well, but not overall. Uh, Cleveland, I thought throughout the game we defended you know pretty well. Uh, down the stretch, we could have done some you know I, you know better, but. For the most part, we 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 defended well enough. So um, I think consistently defending uh, at a high level and communicating at a high level, but just the pace and the flow and how everybody's kind of playing with confidence, shooting the ball with confidence. We're sharing the basketball, um, you know, these last two games. So that's something that I, I I've been proud of. Um, but that that's something that has to be a constant for us constantly sharing, moving the basketball, playing with good pace, and then defensively being consistent in it. Um, you have those games against Brooklyn when you play good defense, um, and then you have those games against Cleveland when you lock down and play good defense, uh, but you can't have lulls like we did against San Antonio where we give up 157 points. Um, you know, you got to be consistent in it. And I think if we're consistent in it defensively, then we're going to give ourselves a chance um, to, you know, get in the play in. And that's the goal and, and, and why you're developing and growing um, as a team. So, and the young guys developing and growing. So it's, it's no better way to develop than to uh, win and push and get in those playoffs. Um, so you got something to build on. Well, in the game against the Cavaliers, the defense was there for you guys. Yeah. Uh, how important is it to, to have the same, uh, the same stability on offense? What you need to do on offense? To have yeah, to offensively. Yeah, Christos, offensively, I, I um, when I look back at the tape, especially because we had a good rhythm going uh, the last three or four minutes uh, when coach put me back in, um, that's on me. Uh, I think maybe not play super fast, but play with a little bit more pace when we're getting the ball up the court. Um, and we're, we're playing out of open, which is our delay, uh, some dribble handoff, something to kind of get us flowing and moving. Um, and then – you know, somebody attacks or play out of a pick and roll. Cleveland's a good defensive team. They got a lot of bigs. And so when you have bigs, you got to move them around. And when you just come down and you try to ISO them, that's going to be difficult. Uh, that's difficult for any team. But that was difficult against, obviously, Cleveland, who's a really, uh, really good defensive team. And, and so I, I kick myself uh, thinking back on just kind of moving the ball, sharing the ball, uh, getting the ball from side to side, moving those bigs. Um, around the court and then uh, attack. And so that was something that, that I, I kind of took personal. Should have came up with some plays or, or something, um, you know, to, uh, to, to create or activate that. So uh, that one was uh, on me. Thank you very much. And thanks for the patience one more time. Man, I ain't tripping, man. You cool, man, with me. <laughs> and if we got one more question from inside okay. the room. Oh, yeah. No, <laughs> nah, I just, nah. The coaching part is hard for me, man, because I can ex I can explain the game and I can describe the game to you. I can put you in the right place. Uh, and as a point guard, like I got the ball, so I can control the whole game. Like I tell you, go here, go there, all that stuff. And when you're a coach, it's like a parenting to me, like. 
you tell your children the things you're not supposed to do. But after that, as soon as they get out there in the world, you just got to hope and pray that everything that you coached and taught to them, that they abide by those rules and different things like that. So, uh, so, I, and I'm not a control freak at all. So I, I would just kind of let you play. Like, I don't know if it opens up. I like the GM side, the, 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 the putting the teams together and stuff like that. But, man, I, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm rolling and enjoying this ride. So I, I, I don't know, but, it, you know, opportunity opens up. But right now, you asking me? Uh, no, no, no. I'm saying, like, right now, like, in the space. Nah. But I, I do, like, you know, explaining the game and, and, and just kind of orchestrating, you know, things. And the game has slowed down a whole lot for me now, now that I'm older. Uh, I can still play fast, but still, you know, know where I want to go and put guys in spots and places. So it's easy when you got the basketball. It's hard when you got the clipboard. <laughs> yes, sir. All right, y'all. Hey, Chris fell asleep. He been on pause the whole time. He fell asleep. I have a question. Ooh, one, I have one a question. Word. What, what is the meaning of life, Ish? That's a good question. That depends on the person. Everybody will have a different answer. 